Part 3. In this part, I'll outline the route of the canal as it passed through nature's village. I will point out features that are still there. I will refer to features that have been lost. But what we won't see is any water. The section of canal that once ran through the village is gone, filled in, and, in many respects, forgotten. Some people will be living near it. Others, on it. Perhaps they don't even know. We've just been looking at our starting point for this section. That's the location of the bridge that allowed the canal to go under the railway line. The line of light coloured vegetation is useful because it gives the approximate route of the canal from the bridge. The bridge was about there. Lock 4 was just in front of it. Here we're looking down the canal with the canal bridge behind us. Manor estate, that was just fields at the time of the canal, is on the right. The building on the left is the lock house. Lock 6 would have been just the other side of the fence up ahead. Just in case you are wondering, Lock 5 was about midway between Locks 4 and 6. This is the lock house before its more recent extension and renovation. This gives a better impression of the lock house look. This was, effectively, the lock keeper's home. There was another lock house since demolished further up the canal just before Waterton's Wall. The role of lock keeper involved operating and maintaining the lock and enforcing company rules on canal users. Here's the lock house as it appears today. The canal ran right in front of it and followed a line in front of the fence. It continued to the right following the hedge into the distance before turning towards the left and moving up towards School Lane. Here's a view of the canal from the opposite side. You can see the back of the lock house on the right. From this side, the canal was behind where the fence is now. As we pan left, the canal banking can be seen just below the line of bushes. Lock 7 would have been situated behind the line of bushes to the right of the yellow slide. As it turns left, you can see the next canal bridge with School Lane in the background. This is the view from the bridge looking back down our route. Here you can see the line of bushes running back down towards the lock house, giving an indication of the canal's route back towards the railway. This is the location of Lock 9. The canal then ran behind the village hall, which you can just about make out here. Behind the allotments, you can once again see the canal embankment just in front of the red-coloured houses. The canal followed the line of houses curling round towards the Walton Club playing fields. Here's a look from a slightly different angle. Lock 9 would have been located somewhere in the vicinity of the White Triangle. Just behind the white hut, you can once again see the canal embankment. Here's a closer look from the Walton Club playing fields. And once again from behind Walton Club itself. The stone houses in the background are built on top of what was once Lock 10. We now move on to the next canal bridge, Soap House Bridge. This was the bridge that took the canal under Shea Lane. Looking up Shea Lane, we can see the location of the bridge that took the canal under the road. And the same looking down Shea Lane. Here we can see the location of Lock 11, after which the new inn restaurant is named.
That concludes part three. I hope you've enjoyed this video and can now visualise the position of the old Barnsley Canal when you're out and about in one. Oh, is that the new inn? I think I'll just pop in for a pint.